Hello everyone, we are from Putri's group. We have gathered some information about Igor Ansov and we would like to present it to you. Here it is, Igor Ansov Strategic Management Theory. But before we start, I would like to introduce our group member. First, I am Saza Nadifa Ferdi with my metric number 268259. And the second member is Latifa Putri Angina with her metric number 268261. And the third member is Putri Novaliza with her metric number is 268262. I'll be talking about Igor Ansov personal details and management theory. Igor Ansov is known as the father of strategic management and we have gathered some points of his personal details. First, he is a prominent Russian-American mathematician and scientist, born in Vladivostok, Russia in 1918 immigrated to the United States with his family, studying at the Stevens Institute of Technology and received his MSc, began his doctoral research in the area of applied mathematics and the theory of elasticity and plasticity, a distinguished professor and carried out research in the area of strategic management of several institutes for 17 years. And the last one is an award in his name has been established as the Igor Ansov Award, and this is established in 1981. Next is the history of management theory. The origin of management theory was when every country undergoes industrial revolution. It occurred in the United Kingdom in the mid 19th century. The evolution of management theory began when there were started industrial activity. In early 20th century, management theory needed by industrial managers to control the industrial work and workers. Managers needed the management concept to coordinate and control the large number of workers in companies. Strategic management can define as comprehensive collection of ongoing activities and process that organizations use to systematically coordinate and align resource and action with mission. Vision and strategy throughout an organization, strategic management activities transform the static plan into a system that provides strategic and performance feedback to decision making and enables the plan to evolve and grow as requirements and other circumstances change. Besides that, Ansov's theory addressed the five levels of turbulence which he determined to be present in the business environment. Next will be continued by Latifa Putri Angina. Time is yours. Okay, I will continue the presentation. The next point is the application of management theory. As we can see on the slide now, this is uh, Ansov matrix which has four strategic. First is market penetration strategic. Second is market development strategic. Third is product development strategic. And fourth is diversification strategic. First is market penetration. Business strive to increase their market share with exciting products in the current market. This is the less risky strategy as no new products and new markets are being explored. This scenario is possible if the market itself is growing. By aggressive marketing tactics and engaging in price wars, businesses can acquire a bigger market share over the competitors. The second one is market development. Uh, market development strategy uh, requires a business to identify new markets for the exciting products. Before entering a new market, you will perform a puzzle analysis of that geographical region, like analyze the political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental factors that could be an opportunity or threat for your business. Since you will be venturing into new era, this strategy is more risky as compared to the previous one. And the third one is product development. This strategy includes developing new products for the exciting market. If the exciting customers' needs are evolving and you wish to maximize profit by 
tapping into the current market only then you can develop new product that aren't existing in the market you can develop new solution to unique problems of your customers this requires a lot of customer research and the capability to innovate fast this also carries moderate risk as you will need to invest a lot of time, efforts, and money in developing products that may or may not work. The fourth one is diversification. Uh, diversification pushes businesses to not only diversify the products portfolio by introducing the new products in the market, but also enter new markets. This obviously, obviously carries the highest risk among all strategies. If businesses research identifies a huge market potential for a new product, a businesses can take the jump and establish itself as the market leader. Business diversification can either be related where they move into a familiar territory or unrelated diversification where the business takes a totally new di direction okay the next point i will explain about contribution or benefits of management therapy first is environmental turbulence environmental turbulence uh, is to describe the different environments he classifies the different environments in which firms operate into five distinct turbulence levels. At one extreme is the stable, placid environment where nothing changes. At the other is the creative environment, characterized by major technological breakthrough and social political upheavals. Environmental turbulence is a model of the business environment consisting of five turbulence levels. For the level 1 is repetitive environment. This is the pleasant environment where nothing ever changes. In a free market economy, very, very few organizations are operating in this environment except for some not-for-profit organizations. The museum is an example of an organization in this environment. The company operating in a turbulent environment needs a compass rather than a detailed roadmap for a roadmap with detailed instructions is of little use when the topography is unknown and fast changing. Level 2 is expanding the environment. Slow incremental this environment is usually found the segment of the economy which is growing rapidly. In this environment, demand usually exceeds supply and customers' needs are basic and undifferentiated. Price is the main determinant in the purchase, decision, and production. Efficiency is the key success factor. Level 3 is changing environment. Fast incremental in this environment, customers' demands are differentiated by different buying power and product preferences. The key success factor shifts from production efficiency to marketing effectiveness. Level 4 is the continuous environment. Predictable with the emergence of the global marketplace, influx of foreign competitors, technology substitutions, rapid shifts in customers' needs, wants and attitudes, and government and social changes the majority of companies today are operating in this complex and discontinuous environment. A recent survey carried out in Singapore showed that more than 70% of the firms in Singapore are operating at a level between 3.5 and 4.5. In this environment, changes are taking place at a rate faster than the company's ability to respond and the future is difficult to predict. The complexity and discontinuity of the environment also make it impossible for companies to succeed simply by optimizing on a single success factors as is in level 2 and 3. 
production efficiency, marketing effectiveness, and product responsiveness are all important determinants of the firm's success, but their relative importance are constantly adjusted by management in response to change in the marketplace. Level 5 is surpriseful environment. Unpredictable in this environment, technological leadership is the key success factor. New technologies and new industries develop rapidly and customers are prepared to pay for the most advanced technology. In the first three levels of environmental turbulence, the future can be extrapolated from the past and there are few surprises. Rapid corporate growth usually leads to high profitability. The company's strengths and successful strategies in the past are likely to remain relevant in the future. In the environment of turbulence level 4 and 5, profit do not follow growth. Extrapolation of the past into the, new, into the future is dangerous. Surprises are frequent. Historical strengths can become weaknesses, and what were successful strategies in the past may not be successful in the future. The second point of his contribution is Contingent Strategic Success Paradigm. Variables forming the strategic success paradigm is 1. The aggressiveness of the firm's strategic behavior must match the turbulence of its environment. 2. The responsiveness of the firm's capabilities must match the aggressiveness of its strategy. And 3. The components of the firm's capabilities must be supportive of one another. As previously mentioned, the research conducted by Emery and Trees into discrete and different environments led Ansoft to develop a typology of five distinct identifiable levels of environmental turbulence. The third is real-time strategic management. The characteristics are first, application of strategic diagnosis to assess the organization's readiness to success in the high turbulent environment. Second is priority attention to ensuring the appropriate mindset of key managers and the firm's culture to respond to this type of environment. Third, Anticipation of encountering resistance to change, accompanied by early steps to convert the resistance into acceptance and support of change. Fourth is risk estimate assessment or surrounding each major strategic decision. Fifth, designing the strategic planning and positioning of the organization. Six is introduction of the real-time strategic control mechanism. And seven is revision mechanism of the organization current strategy. That's all for me. Thank you. Continue the presentation, criticism of management theory. The first planning strategy that result was the planning strategy formulation class. This is a very structured, rigorous methodology. Igor Ansolf is the main character who developed this thinking model. Critics argue the Igor has met strategy planning to formal. They argue uh, that there is no room in the temple for innovation. Over the years, uh, especially in the health uh, business uh, review, the bets between Ansof and Harry Manbert about uh, their differing view of uh, strategic has been expressed in print. Ansof was often criticism by um, Mindbird, who resent the concept of the strategic planning based analytic technique. Uh, this criticism is based on the belief that unsolved, depend planning, serve the term mistake. 
and uh, because there are predictors that strategic uh, thinking can be isolated from operational management and that had data research and technical can um, produce new strategic also regard regarding the challenge of isolation the unsolved metric uh, which uh, is used by itself can be misleading it is not uh, take into account the behavior of competitor the ability of competitor to uh, resist movement to other sector the complementary and the of saving the business activity a company that aim to move into a new market or create a new uh, good must determine whether the company has a uh, translatable scale a uh, scalable system and a supportive shareholder conclusion uh, Igor Ansov is referred as to father of strategy management developing a number of commonly new corporate management concept combining the with proficious uh, strategy management method that has been uh, best the correct new strategy management paradigm uh, and soft uh, principles make management more strategic and stable in the future the unsolved metric has proven usually and with the use of the real life evidence it actually uh, described in the most effective strategy business can use depending on the mac and customer statement uh, he designed it to plan a general strategy for a company established to uh, a setting or new product and define defining uh, on their market and product intentions we must consider the applied to the product offer in the market thank you guys happy watching